Hey guys, Ava here, and today is going to be a very interesting tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to teach you guys how to install your very own comp sprocket. But not just any comp sprocket. No, this is the Star Racing M8 Compensator Ramp Cam, built by George Bryce himself. And today, he's going to be coming up to the shop to give us a little insight on how to install the comp sprocket. So let's get started. Hey, my name is George Bryce. I'm uh, originally from South Carolina. I moved to Georgia, I opened up my own motorcycle shop. I opened up Star Racing and I did a lot of what the guys here at DC Cycle and Racing do. Did it for 40 something years and now I'm retired. And over those years I learned a lot about what makes certain engines great and what certain engines need to do even better. And I've kind of taken a personal interest in the Milwaukee 8 package that's so popular today. And at, at the shop here at DC, cycle and racing I see lots of Milwaukee 8's and twin cams here and of course I'm a big fan of that and uh, the guys asked me to come over today and introduce a couple of products and to help out with an installation video and I was glad to do it anything I can to help people get better parts for their Milwaukee 8 and get to the right shop to get the work done. Start by draining the primary. What size socket is that? These are five eighths. Five eighths, good. Five sixteenths we're going to use to take the floorboards off. To be able to get to the primary cover. We're going to use a three sixteenth to get all these primary cover bolts. Is that quick? Get the bolt, take the cover off. It's easy. Anybody that's good with simple hand tools at their home should be able to do this themselves. And uh, having this listed out as what the size wrench is and what size bolts they are and stuff is really great. How do you arrange these to know where they go back? Yeah. You can kind of tell from the, the inner primary I got right here, the bolts are longer and there's going to be four of these long bolts that go across right here and the rest are going to be the same size as these. Awesome. And we'll look at that when you get them out. You can see how you know if it's the wrong bolt you put in the wrong hole. Oh, yeah. Right, good point. Yeah, if you take out the long bolt and try to put it in one of these, you can tell that that's going to be way too long. Yeah. Go ahead and remove the old gasket. Then here, all you gotta do is take off the tensioner and remove this bolt right here. And you'll be able to slot it right out of the way and put the new one in. It's a half inch. to take this apart it's going to try to extend and they make a tool for it but you don't have to have a special tool you can just push this all the way back down you'll see when the teeth line up there it's all the way and then if you don't have this special tool right here you can use a zip tie to just wrap around it and then hold it still It takes this tool right here to put it in a bond where you can break that bolt loose. How tight is that? Uh, the final torque is supposed to be 175. Ooh. So it gets pretty tight. Take this bolt on out. 
Move. Sprocket retainer. We just pull this over to the side. Be able to get right to it. Pull that one off. New one on. Put the sprocket retainer back in. Well done. Then. I made it look easy. Gonna go back with a new bolt. Pull this over. This is still warm. Oh, golly. Put a dab of red lock right on. There you go. This is the factory compensator ramp cam. This one is um, not worn really, really bad, but the part that worries all of us Milwaukee 8 owners is these brake right here. They're very fragile. They're hard, but they're very fragile. So what we do is we make a billet one that are made out of crankshaft material. They still wear because it's a metal to metal contact part, but these won't break. Pretty good. That's what we got here. That's a, we got that from Jim's. Uh -huh. That's really handy to keep these from rotating. Mm -hmm. I think back in my day, I just had to like put it in gear and get somebody to hold a rear brake. Yep. And uh, so this wouldn't turn while I tried to torque it. But that right there is, you're putting, getting ready to put a lot of effort into this mm -hmm. bolt right here. <laughs> you're gonna turn something if you don't have a good way to lock these two sprockets together. Good enough for most Detroit deep. Let's take a look at the chain tensioner and make sure it's not worn real bad. This is a, I think it's a Delrin material that does a good job of keeping this uh, chain tight. And I like these automatic tensioners. Some people don't like them. They want to use a, another brand. And I like this, this cool little trick you did here. And that's nice. If, if you can get you a little zip lock, a little wire tie, make sure you tie it down like that so that you can you won't have to fight this automatic tensioner putting it back together. Get it lined up with the holes. Then we're gonna go, just get a drop of blue Loctite. And we're going to take this zip tie off. And you see it automatically adjusts itself. Make sure the primary cover is clean, doesn't have any trash in it. Whose bike is this? This would be Thor Swims. 
All right, and um, why are we using Thor Swim's bike? Dustin, you know why we're using Thor Swim's bike? Because it's the guinea pig. <laughs> He's the guinea pig. I tell you what, I've seen on the internet and on some videos where he can tear up anything. So, it's a good example of a uh, good test for us to see if, if he can tear this up. I'm to these to 145. Is that inch pounds? It is. why he's torquing these bolts. Bolts are springs. When you tighten up a bolt, in order for it to stay tight, you put a little Loctite on it. Maybe he's saying some red or some blue, but the reason why they stay tight really is we over tighten them up to where they get longer. And when he puts 125 inch pounds on that bolt or what, and maybe 25 foot pounds on a bolt this size, it actually makes the bolt a little longer and it stretches it where the threads are screwed in and where the head is up against the part and it makes the bolt a little longer and it tries to shrink back in and stay tight. So that's what keeps them tight is that's why you have to torque them so you can get the, the, the stretch put into every bolt. That is for something you don't want to take off often, I think. Is yeah. that right, it is. Dustin? And the blue is for something that will be temporarily tightened. You can take it on and off several times without uh, having the issues. There's other brands. But this is the goal, is to use like more permanent thread locker versus some occasional every now and then thread locker. Take the original O-ring off. Place it with the new one. You don't have to use any of the thread sealant, but we always do. Well, that thing don't have a chance of it. Mm -mm. It's got thread sealer, it's got O-ring, and a new O-ring. Justin, they need one of those right here. It'd be nice. <laughs> so we could put the fluid back in there without having to go through this. Mm -hmm. What size are those? It's a T27. T27. That's a very cool tool right there. Very handy. Yes, it is. Good luck with that. 30 ounces to go back in. You see him drop something, a shake. Oh, yeah. Get nervous. He's a real guy, though. He's not like a robot. I mean, this <laughs> guy, he's a real mechanic. Doing a good job. Fill that up. Then you want to uh, just a. Uh, a drop. And we're using blue because you're going to take them out sooner than that big. Mm -hmm. We're fixing to take the bike outside, and Thor, for some reason, thinks he's gonna break it, but he probably won't. So, oh, I'm gonna break it. No, you ain't. Oh, I'm gonna break it. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see about that, guys. We'll see about that. We're here today again. I'm gonna tell you, we're here to test our billet compensator parts that eliminate the issues that the Milwaukee Eights have with these, and I want to show you. The one we just took out of this bike. This is how they typically look when they come out. So that's not why we built a billet one. We, this is the billet one we built. This is why we built the billet one. It's because these are very brittle. 
They're very hard and they just shatter so easy. We've seen so many of these broken, even four or five of them right through the shop here at Red Bay, Alabama. And there is a big need out there for the Milwaukee 8s for the billet part. These are unbreakable. They're made out of crankshaft, billet crankshaft material. These do not break. Matter of fact, we guarantee them to be unbreakable. They will wear because it is metal to metal contact. They will wear a little bit, but they will not break. And that's our claim. So if you have a Milwaukee 8 and you're putting hot rod parts in it and you're driving it a little more abusive, maybe less abusive than Thor would, but if you're gonna abuse your Milwaukee 8, you need to put the billet compensator in because these will eliminate what we're seeing here today with these broken ones. All right, that was fun. Looks like I didn't break it. I guess we'll have to let Thor try and break it. I'm definitely gonna break it. Here, you're going to Show me how to do it, bro. I guess that was unsuccessful. I don't know if anything's gonna break it. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If y'all would like to purchase your very own comms rocket, you can do so at our website at www.dcsalconracing.com. It sells for $399, but there's more. Use our brand new promo code BRYCE, B R Y C E, to earn a free kit that includes a gasket, O rings, and primary oil with a step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to install it. Use our promo code BRICE and you can get it free of charge. Remember, that's www.dcsalconracing.com and promo code BRICE. Thanks so much and we'll see y'all next time.